I want you to grab your Bibles and go to Ephesians chapter number one. And, and we're going to read just a portion of scripture just to get it back in you. And then I'm going to share a few things with you. I'm going to try to slow down this morning. And we'll see how that works. Because there's a lot I want to just, just as we say in Texas, dump on you. Now, Ephesians 1, we talked about last night how this is Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus after it has been birthed. And he wants them to go on to deeper revelation in the knowledge of God. And then he says, of course, in verse number 19, where our focus is, he wants them to know, to get some, a revelation of three things. What is the hope of his calling? And what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us? Not just, he doesn't want us to just get a revelation of God's exceeding greatness of his power. But rather, he says, I want you to take it a step further. I want you to get a revelation of what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward you. What does this mean to you? What is the exceeding greatness of his power, what is that toward you? That's the revelation. Not that he has it, but how is that significant for you? And then he begins to tell us what it, why it's significant. According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places far above principality, power, might, dominion, and every name that is named not only in this world, but in that which is to come. And then chapter number two, verse number six says, and he raised us up together. And made us sit together in heavenly places. Now, now we know why he said that you may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us. According to the working of the mighty power which raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand. Why? Because he raised us up together. So... We're, we're going to talk about the ascension dimension part two. And maybe we'll get to the ascension in the next service. But this morning, I want to take you into something. You know, in Matthew chapter number 11, John the Baptist has come on the scene preaching a message no one had ever heard before. He comes on the scene out of the wilderness eating locusts and wild honey. And he's out there screaming to the top of his voice. The anointing of God is so prominent on him that what he's preaching in the wilderness, they have to come out of the cities to come hear what he's talking about. And he's shouting, repent, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That word repent means to change the way you think. Repentance is not confession. There are two different things. Confession of your sins is when you admit to a wrong or an error. You're confessing that. That's saying, Father, I missed it. 
and I, I just come before you. You saw it. You know what I did. That's confession. Repentance is a change of thinking. It is literally to be thinking this way and turn around and think that way. It means a redirection of your thought, almost like, like a 180. It's just a total opposite direction. And John comes on the scene and he says, everybody, you're going to have to start thinking this way. For the kingdom is here. Woo. He says a brand new revelation, a brand new manifestation of heaven is coming. And he's saying, I'm trying to prepare your mind because heaven is coming. <laughs> he said, you're going to have to change the way you've been thinking because there is a kingdom from heaven that is coming. And then Jesus shows up on the scene and says, I'm it. And then Jesus began to preach. The first words out of his mouth, out of, out, after he comes out of the Jordan, comes through the wilderness, the first words out of his mouth are repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Oh my God. John says you're going to have to change the way you're thinking for the kingdom is coming. Jesus shows up and says it's here now. And you're going to have to change the way you're thinking. Why is that? Because this is the way the kingdom advances. Jesus says in Matthew 11 verse number 12 for the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. And the violent take it by force. Boy, y'all are so good with these screens, I tell you. <laughs> y'all need to train other ministries how to do this. <laughs> now, that, that's a little obscure when you read it that way. If you read it in other translations, it gives you a better understanding of what it is saying. It is saying from the days of John the Baptist, from the moment John showed up, the kingdom of heaven has been advancing. Okay. It, it, means it, 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 it means that John showed up with a revelation that the kingdom is coming. And at that moment, the kingdom began to push its way into the earth realm. And then the Bible says... And the violent seized it. Why am I saying that this morning? Because that's the way the kingdom advances. Whenever God gets ready to advance the kingdom, he sends a revelation. And then people have to press into it. And I believe I was sent here to echo with Peter and Tricia the kingdom revelation and the kingdom word that God is trying to bring the church into. Because I can tell you prophetically where we're headed. We are headed into sonship. That's where the body of Christ is going. God has been growing us and growing us and growing us and growing us. And the end time message and manifestation will be that of sonship. 